Hello. You may have used Photosphere, the 360 view on your DJI drone, and you want to make those into spheres that you can put on Facebook or put online on Google Street View as well. So I want to show you how you can do that, mainly Facebook today. And I'm going to show you the settings that I use to do this. Now, I do use Lightroom, Adobe's Lightroom Classic, and I do use Adobe's Photoshop as well which is a paid for software however there are obviously free alternatives to this type of software available i'll perhaps put a little list in the description with some of those alternatives that you could use so let's have a look i've downloaded here as you can see all these photos from my dji mini 2 so these are all separate photos that create a sphere and you can see here you can see how they all link up and these this photo for anyone who is interested was taken in the Scottish Highlands. Now, one of the key things that I find when taking your photos on your drone is make sure you enable RAW. So at the very bottom, you have an option of taking JPEG type photos or JPEG and RAW. Make sure you take RAW. The reason for that is it gives a lot more information is stored into the photograph meaning that you can manipulate the photograph or alter the settings like the exposure settings, the highlights, etc., a lot better and a lot easier. Whereas with JPEG, you're layering on top, so you'll lose some quality. So make sure you take your photos in RAW. Now I've got all these imported into separate files here, down the bottom. What I'm going to do using Lightroom is head over here and we'll click Auto. Okay, you can see that subtly tweaked everything, the settings a little bit. However, if I want to adjust things, I may want to bring up the shadows a little bit because it's a little dark at the bottom. I can do, I may want to reduce those highlights to bring the sky back a little bit. I'm quite happy with that photo. I like the warmth. Everything's perfect for me. In order for, to do a pano, you want to ensure that the settings that are used are the same across all the photographs. Otherwise, it won't stitch properly together and you'll have blocks. That's You really want to avoid that. So in order to do that, very simply, if I right click on here and I go to develop settings, I can click copy settings. I'm going to pick everything and I'm just going to click copy. I'm now going to select everything, all these photographs along here uh, with shift and click. I'm going to right click one of them go on develop settings again and I'm going to paste settings there we go so all of these photographs now have the same settings as the original photograph that I edited okay so our next step now is to select all the photos like so we will right click and hover over photo merge and what we want to do is do a panorama Lightroom will now generate a preview for us. This might take some time depending on uh, the number of photos you have, the resolution of the photos, and of course the power of your PC. Okay, once this is complete, as you can see here, our photo is now merged. We will click Merge, and it adds it to a task up here and it's creating the panorama. Okay, so here is our panorama and Lightroom has stitched this together. It looks like it's done a pretty good stitch there as well. Our next step is to open this with Photoshop. So I'm going to click Edit In, Edit in Photoshop. Remember, if you're using other software, just open it up in your Photoshop equivalent app. You may have one app that does it all. Photoshop can do merges like this on its own. And um, you can also tweak all the settings. I just prefer to use Lightroom for editing photos. Okay, now we've got that in here. What we want to do is go to Filter. And if we head down to Other and Offset. And I've just put a horizontal of minus 5,000. What we're trying to do here is you can see the edges of the photograph were there. I've brought the edge towards the middle. I'm going to click OK. So what we can see if we zoom in here, you can see very faintly because it's such a good merge. Okay, this is a huge image, so it's struggling a little bit. You can see this line here. And you can really see it there, okay? And it's just not quite right. 
Okay, the sky is actually pretty good, apart from the top here. Now, you can leave that, you don't have to mess with it, and if you're happy with that line, you don't need to do anything. If you want to try and subtly sort of hide that line a little bit, one of the ways that I do this is using the healing brush. So I will say, pick here with the option key on a Mac. I think it's Alt on a PC. And I'll move to here and I just start to paint over, okay? Same again, just gently move your brush around. You may wanna go the other side. Okay, and you're trying to just sort of mask that line a little bit. Now, obviously it's never gonna be perfect unless you spend a hell of a lot of time, which I haven't got the time to do that. But I'm just trying to, if your eye spins around on the 360, unless you really know that this is where the join is, you're not going to see it once the healing brush has done its job because it does it so well. Okay, and you can see there that I'm just getting rid of that. Now, it does get a little bit more tricky here when you're trying to get lines to match up. Oh, that's not good. Let's just undo that bit. Okay, so let's zoom in here. We might want to make our brush a little smaller. Okay, and we want to try and sort of sort of just blend this in a little bit better than it is. This is this bit's going to be really tricky here. Okay, I'm using a soft brush just to let you know. Really soft brush, small size. Just trying to bring it in. Obviously, I'm going to do this really quick. I would perhaps spend a little bit more time on it normally. Now, this one is going to be really tricky here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and just bring that down like that it's pretty tricky there we go so it sort of merges so it just looks like there's a break there which is fine and we've got a little bit of a line here can't really see it here i think if we go up here here it is again see i even lost it then you can just about certainly see it there and i'm just painting away to get rid of those lines there we go that'll do you can still see a little bit there but that's mainly because you know it's there whereas if you didn't know it was there I don't know if you'd actually spot it straight away and it just makes it a little bit softer on the eye okay don't worry about that offset you can keep that where it is now because we know that the this this end here and this end over here matches up perfectly so our next stage is the aspect ratio. So the aspect ratio that the Mini 2 takes is very wide, but it isn't tall enough for what Facebook likes. Also, the image is a little bit too big. I found, if we go back to the pixels so you can see here, I found that the 18,000 pixels that it takes is just too big. Um, Facebook doesn't like it. It's probably the resolution issue as well. Um, so what we want is 16,000. So if I go to File, I'm going to go to New. And I'll go to Saves. And I've made a uh, preset here. But these are the settings that you want to use. So a width of 16,000 pixels, a height of 8,000 pixels, and a resolution of 72. So let's create that. There we go. And what I'm going to do with my photo here is I'm going to just drag it into that document. Like that. Click yes. It's going to take some time because it is a huge image. And there we have it. Now, if I click Command T or Control T on Windows, we just want to make sure that this snaps to this edge. And we want to do the same here. Now, you'll see we've got a bit of a problem. We're missing the bottom of the image and we're missing the top. And Photoshop has a great feature called Content Aware. And we're gonna use that today. If not, and you haven't got Photoshop or you haven't got the Content Aware feature, what you could have and you're likely to have on your package is something like the Clone Stamp tool, something like that. And what you can do, and it will take a long time if you want it to look nice, is you can click there with your Alt key and you could start cloning in some of this sky to make it look 
like the sky is taller. The top part of the image here and the very bottom part is the very top and very bottom of the sphere. So it doesn't actually have to look that great because most people will be looking at this bit. They won't look right to the top or right to the bottom below them. They'll want to look at this main element that's in the middle here. But for speed, I'm going to use the content aware tool. So I'm going to select the bit that's missing here first like that. I'm going to right click and click content aware fill. This takes some time. It's now analyzing the photograph. And as you can see, it's done a pretty good job there at adding a sky. Yeah, we've got some duplicate going on here. But like I say, this very top bit isn't really going to be seen that much. So I'm going to be happy with that. And I'm going to click OK. What I'm going to do is go back to light first layer. And I'm going to now select the bottom. And I'm going to repeat the exact same process. Content aware fill. And you can see that it knows which bit to pick. If it's picking something up that you don't want, by the way, it started to put a bit of the car park, for instance, let's say down here. I can just say ignore the car park by rubbing out the bit that it's allowed to use like that. Okay, there we go. I'm going to click OK because I'm happy with that and there we have it we have the right size now for Facebook brilliant so is that it one more step if we click file and we'll do save we'll save a copy onto my computer put it in here we'll call it drone for Facebook and we don't want a Photoshop PDF we want a JPEG Click save. I use around quality 10, that's more than enough. And once that's saved, we need to do one more thing, and that is to download Exif Fixer. Now I've got it already downloaded. You can get that here at exiffixer.com slash app. And it runs on Windows and it runs on a Mac. It's great, it's free, completely free as well. It's a great little app. You can see it here. Now the problem is, with the image that we've just saved is Facebook when you upload it will just think it's an image it's a flat image it doesn't have the data in there to say you need to display this as a sphere so what we do is head to our file which I put in here just drag it on like that it's gonna take some time and as you can see there's our image now all you need to do is make sure that this option is selected. We don't want to delete the original image. I don't want to do that. And what I do is I insert fake camera data to say it's an Insta360 1R. I'm not too sure whether you actually need this option, but I just did anyway because then it makes out that it's definitely a 360 photograph made by a 360 camera in its eyes. We click add and as you can see it's made a new document there's your original one there is the one that has been edited with the EXIF data now all you need to do is upload that straight to Facebook it's quite a big image so it will take some time and then you're done it's as simple as that I hope that helps guys and if you have any more questions don't hesitate to ask in the description below. See you later.